Welcome to my channel. This is JC Rock and Metal Reviews. My name is John, and today I have a new album that came out today by the band Bongzilla. And the name of the album is called Weeds Consin. So before I begin, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I do rock and metal reviews, rankings, and more. So Bongzilla is a stoner rock band, and I guess you can call them stoner metal if you want to call them that. All the songs are marijuana inspired. They formed in 1995 in Wisconsin. So the band consists of Mike Muleboy, Jeff Spanky Schultz, and Mike Magma Henry. And they have pretty much been active from 1995 to 2009. They took a break for about, I think like six years, and then reformed in 2015. And they have been active ever since. They released uh, four albums on Relapse Records and this most recent one on Heavy Psych Sounds. So I'm just going to go through a brief bio of the band because there's not really too much to talk about. The first album was released in 1999 called Stash. After that, they released an album called Apogee. Now this album featured three studio recordings and four live recordings. Some of the song titles are The Grim Reefer, Witchweed and Dealer McDope. The next album was released in 2002 called Gateway. This was another stoner metal album. And some of the songs were called Green Thumb, Stone a Pig, and Sunshine Green. And in 2005, they released another album on Relapse Records called Americanacan. And some of the songs were Weedy Woman, Stone Sphere, and Champagne and Reefer. And that is actually a cover song by McKinley Morganfield, or better known as Muddy Waters. So he is a very famous blues singer. So many of you, if you're into the blues, you might know that particular song. Fast forward to 2021, and a new album is called Weeds Consin. I'm going to talk about the songs on this album, but basically this is a stoner metal band. So if you're unfamiliar with the genre, it's similar to doom metal. The guitars are tuned down, the songs are fairly slow. A lot of it is reminiscent of an like early Black Sabbath. Think of their first album or Master of Reality. The guitars are tuned down a little more, a little more distorted. The vocals remind me of like black metal. They're in that style, very dark and aggressive. And there's also a classic rock vibe that reminds me of 60s rock and 60s psychedelia. So you put it all together with uh, marijuana themed uh, lyrics and it's pretty much what you get with this band. So there's not a lot of songs. There's six songs and I'll just go over them one by one. The first song is called Sunday Driver, which is Sunday as in the ice cream. The guitars are heavily distorted and you hear like a lot of like distortion and feedback in the tone. It moves very slow. The riff is reminiscent of like an old Black Sabbath or traditional doom metal. The vocals are re very reminiscent of like black metal. And the song is fairly minimalistic. There is a guitar solo that does remind me of some of the early work of Tony Iommi. It's not too technical, but it does capture that sound. The next one was called Free the Weed, and this one's probably even like a little slower than the one before it. You got heavy guitars, you got slow riffs, and I think the drums play more of a role in this song. You hear like a lot of like drum fills, and some of the verses is just vocals and drums, and that's it. The guitar solo is still there, and this is again, you know, inspired by Black Sabbath. The next song is called Space Rock, and this is a ten and a half minute song. It reminds me of that UFO album called UFO 2 Flying, and that one came out in 1971. And they called it like one hour of space rock, and it had like a 30 minute song on that album, which was probably like the longest rock song at that time. So this reminds me a lot of that album. There is like a lot of like psychedelic, you know, rock music in that in the song. You do hear the heavy guitars, they come in after about two and a half minutes. You got some heavy vocals, but they're really not as prominent. This is mostly like an instrumental and it's more of like a 
psychedelic rock song. The next song is a 35 second interlude and it's just a short instrumental. There's some drums, it's very spacey. The name of it is called The Weed Eater, but that's all that is. The next song is called Earth Bong Smoked Mags Bags. And this is the longest song in the album. It's a little over 15 minutes. It's very slow and it's, you know, not like most of the songs on the album, but this is just a little more on the psychedelic side. This album kind of has like the metal songs and like more psychedelic songs and this is one of the more psychedelic ones. You just hear quiet drums and bass, guitar harmonics, a lot of heavy riffs. One of the riffs in the middle of the song reminds me of uh, an old Black Sabbath song. I think it's off of uh, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. I just couldn't place it, but it just reminded me a lot of that. So that is that song. And the last song is called Gummies. It's a six minute and 20 second song. This is uh, more of the stoner metal uh, type of a song. It's less of the like psychedelic uh, rock that they do have. It does have some like trippy sound effects. I guess you can call it an instrumental because all you do is hear people laughing. But the guitars are heavy, the drums are heavy. And that is it, that just closes out the album. So in conclusion, I'm not going to give this album a final score because, because it's the type of album that is targeted to a certain population and we all know what that is. And this is a genre I never really got into too much. When songs are like very slow, I kind of get bored. But it's the type of album you have to be in the proper state of mind to enjoy. Because one thing I did like about it was the parts that reminded me of Black Sabbath because I am a big fan of their early albums. I enjoyed that aspect of it, but this is not something that I would go back and listen to or listen to at the gym or something like that. I thought it would be interesting to explore this particular genre and given that it did come out today and today is April 20th, I thought it would be uh, the perfect uh, album to review today. So if you do like this band, um, you would probably like the album, but if not, it's probably not your cup of tea. It's just targeted to like a specific you know, population. So that's it, comment below. Let me know if you know the band uh, or have you heard the other albums? And I have a really big anniversary album that I missed because I was so busy with the new releases this weekend. The 50th anniversary of Ellie Woman of the Doors, which is April 19th. So I'm going to release that tomorrow. It will be a little late. But watch that one tomorrow and check out the in-video links. And I'll see you in the next one.